presume. Thank you. Okay, everybody, welcome um, to the last in the series of what has been three RDA information sessions prior to our virtual plenary 18, which is beginning, as you may well know, next week. Um, you can still view the previous sessions, um, both 30 minutes long, which looked at uh, different aspects of the RDA, including the RDA governance, the groups, the outputs and adoptions, and also an in-depth look at um, plenaries. But today we're going to be focusing on um, the RDA website, um, particularly how to navigate it and find what it is that you're looking for. And we'll also have a look at next week's plenary and the event platform that we'll be using. We will pause between the sessions um, to answer any questions you may have. Just very quickly, some housekeeping, uh, which you're all very familiar with. Um, if you're familiar with Zoom, um, please do mute your microphones while the pre presentation's ongoing. This is being recorded so that people can um, access it and view it at a later date. Um, please, of course, use the chat box or raise your hand if you prefer to speak, if you have any questions in the Q&A sessions. And of course, turn on your video if you feel comfortable with that and if, if you have the bandwidth, of course. For those of you who like to um, use social media, you're very welcome to um, tweet this session using hashtag RDA Plenary. Okay, so my name is Bridget, Bridget Walker. Um, I'm speaking to you today from, uh, from Italy in a very small village just outside Pisa, um, where I live most of the time. I work with the RDA Secretariat and I'm also the office manager of the RDA Foundation, which is the legal entity of RDA Global. And my colleague Megan is joining me. Yep. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Hey, Megan. <laughs> I'm Megan Underwood. I'm with RDA US. Um, I'm also working on the Secretariat. I handle some communications and website and plenary support. And I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, in the US. Thanks, Megan. We'll come right back to you soon. Okay, so a very quick introduction to the RDA, which has, um, as you can see here, an impressive um, vision and mission um, to share and reuse data across technologies, disciplines and countries to address the grand challenges of society. And we do that through our mission of building the social and technical bridges that enable open sharing and reuse of data. Uh, the community, the RDA community, currently um, consists of over 12,000 members. So this is more than what's showing on that slide because we update it at the end of um, each month. And here you can also see the other aspects that make up the RDA, the working groups, the interest groups, our organizational members and affiliate members. The work of the RDA community is based on a number of guiding principles which you can see here are openness, consensus, inclusivity, harmonization, community-driven, non-profit and technology neutral. We, uh, the openness um, goes right through to our governing bodies, not only um, with our community and across all our processes. We try to move forward by achieving a consensus among our membership and we aim to be inclusive by seeking broad, balanced and an inclusive representation of our members and stakeholder communities. We work to achieve a harmonisation across the data standards, policies, technologies, infrastructure and communities. And of course, we are community driven, um, a public community driven body is the RDA, which is constituted of volunteer members and organisations supported by the RDA Secretariat. And finally, we're a non-profit and technology neutral. Of course, we don't promote, endorse or sell commercial products, technologies, etc. And the RDA, those many RDA community members come together to what is the heart of the RDA through the working groups, the interest groups and um, what is our new category, communities of practice. Um, you will find more information on our groups by watching one of the previous information sessions or the video, or of course, by visiting the RDA web website, which Megan is shortly going to see you, show you, sorry. You can see here that the groups have um, different aspects. Um, for example, the working groups, they have a particular duration time of between 12 and 18 months because they're working towards producing a particular output or recommendation. 
while the interest groups do not have um, a particular duration, their discussions continue while they remain active, but do sometimes um, develop into an outgroup, uh, uh, working group, sorry, if they wish to produce recommendations. And then we have our new community of practice, um, which is more of an, an umbrella group um, um, across uh, different domains. And I believe you'll be able to see and hear more about them at the next plenary. Okay, so uh, we're now gonna look at the website, the RDA website, and Megan is gonna give you a live demonstration of um, how to navigate it and to help you hopefully find what you're looking for. Over to you, Megan. All right, I'm going to start by sharing my screen. And also posting a link, feel free to navigate along with me, link in the chat. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start at the RDA homepage. You probably all know what this looks like. Yes. Um, here you'll have a slider with important information that we post. Okay. A couple other points of interest on the homepage are the news and events block here. This gets updated fairly frequently with important things that are going on. Okay. And then the second point of interest on this main page is the first way that you can get involved if you want. Here's our request for comments box. And after you've registered, as you can see, I'm not logged in. Well, I don't know. No, I can't do anything yet. Um, this is where case statements for working groups or charters for interest groups um, and community practices will have proposals. Um, this is also where you'll find outputs that working groups produce when they've reached the review stage. So this is a great way to go ahead and get involved is to read them, look, see what's going on and participate in community reviews. Okay. So let's say you're totally new for general info. We're going to check out the newcomers section. So it's going to be about RDA, RDA for newcomers. So this is a great page for both a quick perusal and as a reference guide if you need to learn about something or you're confused and um, there's some things you want to look into more in depth. There's links, there's intros to the various aspects of RDA, um, but we're going to focus less on that today and focus more on this section, how you can get involved if you want, and specifically these two right here, joining a group and attending plenaries. We're going to talk about joining a group now. And attending plenaries we'll get back to in the second half of this presentation after Bridget's given you a little bit more of an overview about what plenaries are. Okay. So you're here, you're ready, you've got expertise, and you want to get involved. So let's look at joining a group. Navigate to the group section. And a really handy way to get an overview is to go ahead and look at finding your by topic and discipline. So any groups that have these categories tagged will show up in this little search engine. So if there's something that you are you have expertise in in these fields or you're interested specifically, this would be a great way to find groups who are working on things that you're interested in working on too. So let's go ahead and pick. Oh, I've got something for my script here. Let's do data description because that's the one I already looked at. So it's going to refresh and now all the groups, both interest groups and working groups that have data description and their tags will show up here. So let's say I'm interested in looking into this sensitive data interest group. So whatever you've chosen, this will lead you to the group's overview page. And this is where you can find out all the information you need to know about this group in particular, what they're doing, um, what plenaries they've been involved in and how you can get involved with participating in the group itself. So a brief overview, you've got the chairs, you've got usually a summary of what the group's goals are and what they're working on. Sometimes this is where the group will post day-to-day, um, -day, well, week-to-week, -week, month to month, when they're meeting, how they're meeting, how you can get involved. Another fun thing to look at is plenaries. So you can see what plenaries this group had sessions at. They'll be tagged, okay? You can check out the group's charter or proposal or to see what they're all about. Sometimes they'll have notes in the wiki. This one does. Here's some events that might be related. And then the best one probably to actually figure out how to participate is the post section. 
So every group gets a mailing list. And this post section is uh, archive of all of the mailing list emails that have been sent out. So you can see here for this one, um, we're getting emails about when the group is meeting and how you can register. So you can go ahead and look and go, oh, I see. This is how they're getting together. This is how I meet with them so that I can participate in their group. So now you're like, Megan, I love it, I'm in. How do I, how do I participate? You're just gonna go ahead and hit join group, which I can't do because I'm not logged in. So register first. And by joining the group, it'll both um, add you to the group on the RDA website itself and also add you to their mailing list so you can get more info about what they're doing and how you can participate. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hand it back to Bridget. I think she has a nice little Q&A slide to pop up. Oh, you're muted. Hold on. Can you hear me now, everybody? Yep. Okay, sorry, I was speaking and I wasn't. Unmuted. I'm just was saying I must apologize because I introduced myself and Megan earlier and I completely forgot about our audience. So I'm really sorry. So um, very curious to know where you're joining us from. So if you'd like to put in the chat um, or on video, please um, let us know where you're uh, joining us from. That would be great. And then we can move on to some questions and answers. Hello, Lance. Thanks for joining us. Elise, Raina, okay. Well, we have a majority from the US at the moment. Adam from Oxford. Thanks very much. And apologies again for ignoring you at the beginning. Okay, if you have any, um, do you have any questions on so far what we've talked about um, on that introduction to the website? I think we have somebody with, I can't see your name though. Somebody has their hand up. Can you see who that is, Megan? Yep, it's probably me. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I, I put a, a comment also in the chat, but like when you were showing the, the sections of an, a specific groups um, um, page with the posts and the wiki and all that, uh, we actually were going through this, like I'm a chair of one of the, our, the working groups and we were, as chairs, we were kind of going through all these sections and trying to understand them better. Um, and that was when we kind of discovered that all the emails that we send to that email list do get posted there. And we've actually gone back and edited a few of them because you can edit, but you can't delete. Um, like some, sometimes they had like personal identifying information um, that was then therefore completely public when people thought they were just really kind of within the email list. <laughs> um, so maybe that's something it should be you know, just made more aware to people that are, especially chairs, to make chairs more aware about that and so that they can warn um, the group members about that. We did that, we did that warning, but definitely no one was aware about that really. Okay, thanks for that, Raina. Yes, Megan, I'm sure that's something that we can... Um... Yeah, I'll make a note, I can, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, anybody else with a question relating to the website? Okay, well, there will be another opportunity towards the end. Um, so I'll move on now to just go quickly through um, plenary meetings before our next demonstration from um, Megan. Um, please remember again that you can listen to more information on plenaries um, by accessing the video recording of last month's um, info session, which gives a lot more detail about um, attending plenary meetings. So what are they, plenary meetings? Um, well, they're what help move uh, the, our RDA community move forward. Um, it's when the working groups and the interest groups, they come together for their working meetings. We also have birds of feather meetings where new topics are discussed and um, the members decide whether an interest group or a working group 
can or should be um, set up. Um, why should you attend? What are the benefits of attending the plenaries? Well, there are um, really many reasons to attend. Um, there's lots of knowledge being exchanged and people discussing barriers and potential solutions. You can learn so much about the new trends, strategies, research developments going on. And of course, you can expand your network and meet like-minded and um, a diversity of people committed and passionate about data science and working in multiple disciplines. And of course, by attending, you are cont contributing to the acceleration of, of data infrastructure development. Uh, if you go to the plenary program for next, the plenary 18, you will be able to see all the sessions taking place and you can filter these also using the plenary pathway so that it gives you a better indication of whether you um, would like to attend. And the people who are attending, that's, we have such a diversity, um, uh, members of the public and uh, RDA community, all from across the globe, with such a diversity of professions and multiple domains. As just a few are listed here, there are so many more. And even though the last three plenaries have not been physical events, they really still are a unique opportunity to engage with so many of these people. And, and this can be done through the event platform that we use, which we're going to tell you about um, shortly. The next plenary, virtual plenary um, 18, we have quite a lot on our schedule. We have 50 working and interest group sessions. There are nine birds of a feather sessions, and we have five joint sessions when working groups and interest groups come together to discuss one topic. And we also have plenary and panel sessions, as you can see here, the first one on the first day, facilitating active communities of practice to address data challenges. And um, on, in the second week, we have a panel session, implementing FAIR, fund policy updates, roadmaps and next steps. And on the last day of the plenary, we have a plenary session, data and software sharing, the role of societies and associations. And of course, there are social events. We have several social events being organized by our regions and some poster, ses poster sessions. So do check out the program. There's a lot going on. And this is where you can access the other information sessions. If you go to the, um, the main um, Plenary 18 page, you will find the links there to the, to the videos. And this will give you a lot more information about how to engage and navigate the Plenary program. Okay, so the plenary this time, uh, the platform we're using to host um, the event is Hoover. And um, you will receive, if you registered for the, um, the plenary, you will receive um, an email from Hoover um, with login details and which you will then be able to view the agenda, the attendee information and the scheduling functionality. And I'm now gonna hand over to Megan and she's gonna give you um, a quick demo of the Hoover platform. Okay. All right. So this is our uh, RDA Plenary 18 Hoover site. Um, like Bridget said, if you're registered, you'll get an email um, this afternoon, my time, or evening, or middle of the night, depending on where you are later today. We're going to send those out. And it'll bring, bring you to here, and you're going to go ahead and make an account. Or if you use Hoover for something else, you can use whatever you um, already, you can log in with the same account. It's just important that you use the email that you registered with on either Eventbrite or that you sent to us to get invoiced, because um, Hoover will match up that email with what we've entered as people who have registered. Okay. So here we have the homepage. There's a lot going on. But um, yep, a little banner, some important announcements, and some links. We'll be using GatherTown for our poster hall, so you can find that here um, and other things going on. Okay, pretty basic. Under the agenda tab, you'll find the sessions. So a couple notes about navigating this. Um, just go day by day. Scroll down, find the sessions you like. Um, if you're interested in certain tracks, We've got things labeled with breakouts um, and the pathways 
that are listed on the RDA website. You can find that by navigating to the plenary 18 page and in the little green navigation bar, you'll find the pathways page. Okay. A little note about using the um, tracks is that it's only going to show you things um, for that selected track on the day you have picked. So for instance, um, if I select only breakout 10, nothing's gonna populate because break, there are no breakout 10s on Tuesday the 9th. Um, but if you go to the day when breakout tens are, you will get them. So for instance, November 3rd wouldn't have 10, but it will have one. And there they are. You can also search for the session name here to navigate to it. So once you find sessions that you're interested in going to, you can go ahead and add them to your agenda. Um, it'll automatically, when you click, click that button, add it to your agenda in Whova itself. But if you'd like to add it to your personal calendar too, here's the option to go ahead and download that. For more information on the sessions themselves, you're gonna go ahead and go to view session. Um, this will have both the link to the, um, the sessions page on the RDA website and also the collaborative notes in the Google Drive to be added here. You can remove it if you didn't actually want to go. You can like it. It was super fun, right? And if we go back to the full agenda, come on. Here's an example of one that already has the Zoom link added. So they will all have them and um, you just hit join the stream and it'll bring you right to the Zoom room. This one was actually a better example. It has the notes already added. So there you go. Okay. So when it's time, Zoom room will be live. And it's just Zoom. There's no, um, we're not using any sort of um, internal meeting system. So it should just bring you to a normal Zoom room from Google. Okay. Um, in the community tab, you'll find some um, message boards. Feel free to add one of your own or participate in some of the questions asked. Um, some fun stuff going on here, or there's some announcements. I think, for instance, Alex has posted the link to the poster session here. So if you're like, where was the Gather Town link? It's going to be here. You can follow any threads that you like, and you will get notifications over here in the messages tab when someone updates those. And on the attendee tab, you can see speakers and other attendees who have made their profile public. Um, you don't have to. When you log into Whova, you have the choice whether you want to be seen by other people or not. Megan, could you just show me how you can do? Because I think I mistakenly opted not to be seen, and I now can't find out how to be seen. Oh, so I don't know. You... I can oh, look okay. that up. Okay. Sorry. No, I don't. Hmm. Okay, I'll keep looking. Thanks. Off the top of my head, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> And then messages, um, this is where if there's someone in particular that you would like to contact, you can search um, for them on a new message. And if they've opted to be public, you can send them a direct message. So, so basically, if you want to interact and meet other people at the plenary, you need to make yourself public. Yes. Yep. yep. And you can see here's the ones I followed, which is none of them. I'm very antisocial. Um, or if I want to start a new topic, you can go ahead and start it and it'll show up right on the message board and people can participate, interact with you. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let me just share my screen again. Thanks very much, Megan. Okay, so do we have any questions about either the website or the forthcoming plenary? Anything you'd like to ask? I'd be curious to know how many of you who are here um, are already RDA members? Could you put in the chat or just put up your hand if you are RDA members?
Francoise, I know you're an RDA member. <laughs> okay, Lance and Hillary. So we only have two, okay, recently joined. Welcome, Elise. Sebastian, not yet, okay. Not yet, but not active. That's absolutely fine, Adam. It can take some time, okay, for you to navigate around and decide how you want to get involved. And the plenary is a great opportunity uh, to do that, to join um, the numerous sessions. Nina, that's great. Yes, yeah, I understand that intimidating feeling when I first started working at the RDA nearly three years ago. It, um, there's, an, there's an awful lot to navigate, but the more you get involved, the more things make sense. And um, yeah, that's the best way just to get involved as much as you can. And the plenary, what, has anybody, uh, any of you registered uh, yet for the plenary? Mm, perhaps still thinking about it. Okay. So is there anything at all that anybody would like to last and ask in the last couple of minutes? Nesta, that's great to hear that you're very interested. Check out the program if you're not sure um, I just suggest that you go to the um, the Plenary 18 program page. I've put the links here in this slide, but it's uh, easily found from the website, as Megan showed you previously. Okay, and the registration link is there as well. And if you need more interested uh, and more information about um, being a new member of the RDA, just go to the newcomers page. There is a lot of information on the on the website. Um, but you can narrow that down to what you need at the beginning and then just take it slowly. Okay, well, if there are no questions, um, I'm just going to say thank you very much, everybody, for attending. I hope you found some of that um, useful. Um, the video for this recording will go up on the um, Plenary 18 main page with the other two videos, so you can always check back and look for more information. And this is all our uh, contact information on this slide here. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us. And um, for those of you who haven't yet decided, I hope you do decide to come to the plenary and hope to see you there. Thank you, Francoise, for coming again. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>